Uh, Mozart Chemise Ye is a, is a poem I wrote after visiting David Smith, the great American sculptor in his house at Bolton Landing, and it's really cool. The, the Mozart comes in because he was his favorite composer. For instance, you walk in and faint. You are being one with Africa. I saw the soda standing next to the bay stallion. It was still foaming. It had what is called a head on it. Then I went and had a double carbonated bourbon on the porch. In the moonlight, the poplars looked like aspidistra. Over the unexperienced lake, wait, wait a while, it all kept murmuring. But I know that always makes me sad. There was a lot of tinselly sky out, which irritated me too. And my anger is strictly European plan. Now why would I get up and dance around? You see, it is all very beautiful. The emphasis being on suds, suds in the lake, suds in my heart. Luckily, when the lake, the tree, was tempting me, I didn't have any white Toreador pants back at the ranch. They were serving bubbly gin, so I ran down the trail. So short a trail, so sweet a smell. Hay in your ears, it's hot. Oh, world, why are you so easy to figure out? Beneath the ground, there is something beautiful. I've had enough of sky, it's so obvious. Everyone thinks they're going up in these here America. Put on your earrings, we're going to the railway station. I don't care how small the house they live in is. You don't have any earrings, I don't have a ticket. On July 25th, 1966, a few weeks after this film was completed, Frank O'Hara died from injuries sustained in an automobile accident. Frank O'Hara was an associate curator of painting and sculpture at the Museum of Modern Art. He was a playwright as well as an art critic and was one of the wittiest of contemporary poets. He was part of the group, including John Ashbery and Kenneth Koch, sometimes called the New York Poets. John and Kenneth and I, and a number of other people later, found that the only people who were interested in our poetry were painters or sculptors. That the, you know, they were enthusiastic about the different ideas and they were more inquisitive. Um, they had no, being non-literary, they had no uh, party pre about academic <laughs> standards, attitudes, and so on. Um, so that you could say, I don't like Yeats. And they would say, I know just how you feel, I hate Picasso, too. <laughs> that sort of thing, which is a much pleasanter atmosphere than the literary community was providing at the time. And apart from the fact, of course, that the only people who were doing anything interesting were painters. One painter very much interested in contemporary poetry is Alfred Leslie, who happens to be a filmmaker as well as a painter. In his New York studio, he shows Frank O'Hara some of his current work the best known of which is probably this larger-than-life-size self-portrait. Leslie is one of the painters who collaborated with the New York poets in various theatrical productions. O'Hara and he are currently collaborating on a film. Poets in, in New York always sort of had some kind of a relationship with the theater. When the artist theater was started, for instance, the whole point of it was to do plays of an avant-garde content but have real artists do the sets, rather than commercial designers. The painters who collaborated with us, like Alfred and Larry Rivers and Grace Hartigan and Jane Follicker, uh, and Elaine de Kooning, um, and Nell Blaine, um, they got the script and saw it as a theatrical event. It was not going to be made into something where you take it to Boston and adjust it and rewrite it and it's really the, just the raw material for an experience. The painters that we worked with read the script, either liked it or didn't like it or wanted to do it or didn't want to do it, but they saw it as a theatrical event already, which very few people in the theater will do anymore. You see here, you don't have a view down. So in order to paint these and have the whole sense of confrontation and frontality, actually there are four uh, positions of perspective. Mm. These are bigger, by the way, than life size. If, look at the perspective you get. When you come up, it's almost tantamount. The reason that I'm interested in movies is not as a substitute for poetry, but who's making it. You know, if Al is making it, then I'm interested in the sense that I can understand what it's going to be or that I know it's at least going to be something interesting for me. One of the poems in Frank O'Hara's book, Meditations in an Emergency, published in 1957 by Grove Press, is titled, To the Film Industry in Crisis. 
and in part the film script that O'Hara is writing with Alfred Leslie is derived from this poem. The main point is that, that it's nobody's business what anybody does when they're alone. All right, should we just and say And these people are being intruded upon, and then when the, if somebody else finds out what they're doing, that some way or another they're criticized, they're condemned, that, yeah. uh, and it, it's <laughs> nobody's business. Well, we time this now up to here. Three minutes, yeah. We have three minutes and 40 seconds. Now, in three minutes, the, at the beginning of the film, Dorothea starts making love to Miles. And John is laying there, and he's sort of talking about the church, and he sort of, uh, oh, yeah, then at one point, just about that time, uh, Johnny Hearn says, um, oh, wait a minute, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me sort of engage myself a little bit with Dorothea. And then he pulls Dorothea away yeah. from Miles, and then Miles gets rather cross. That's just about the time this is happening, and actually for the rest of the film, Dorothea and John are making love, and Miles is addressing himself to Dorothea. How old was I when I realized I wouldn't enjoy anything anymore? Anxiety is just another form of entertainment. Negroes are religious. I am religious. Therefore, I am a Negro. At least I am now white. We walked on and on, hating each other. They're on 14th Street. Yeah. The air was better in bed. Now my eyes hurt. I'm coughing and out of cigarettes. I looked at them on the corner of 23rd Street and 7th Avenue. I wanted to lie down and be run over. It will come anyway. We looked at the Chelsea Hotel. It seemed to be damaged like everything else. Two nuns walked by looking like lady wrestlers. I thought of my childhood in my dirty underwear, my socks. Pollution isn't interesting. You can't even see it. I'm a sight queen, I guess. If you can't see it, it isn't there until it hits you. Boom. I wonder where the land of the orange trees really is. Not Southern California, maybe Nome, maybe Pittsburgh, maybe Nagasaki, maybe Nome. I'm going down there in the sweet polluted twilight if the sun ever goes down and if they ever go away from my quiet walk along 14th Street and 7th Avenue and 23rd Street. Who are they anyway? It's raining. It makes me feel sweaty like last night. I hate to feel sweaty. She doesn't feel anything about me or him. She just wants to be accommodating. We're all generalized, like mannequins. It's nobody's business what people do when they're alone. Everybody is always intruding, but it never makes any difference anyway. Yeah, terrific. Oh, all it's right. going to be marvelous. It's going to be terrific. OK. Yeah. But I kept seeing the image, and it was very, very exciting. But then I want to add, like, um, you know, because John does uh, have these ambivalent feelings, I think so. She, she thinks she's some sort of cornball. Salome. Don't get the attack to you. I think she'd like to have my head. Oops. Hello? Jim. How are you? You have an upset stomach. What did you do? You went to the uh, Kansas City, I suppose. Yeah. This is a very peculiar situation because while I'm talking to you, I'm typing and also being filmed for educational TV. Can you imagine that? Yeah, Alfred Leslie is holding my hand <laughs> while it's happening. It's known as performance. <laughs> what? Yeah, all right. Flash and bolt. What does that mean? Flashing bolt, you mean? Write it in. <laughs> oh, good. Flashing bolt. Okay. A flashing bolt. Is that art, or what is it? I just laid it onto the paper. Frank O'Hara's most recent book is titled Love Poems, published by Tibor Nanage Editions, New York. In 1959, O'Hara wrote this about his poetry. What is happening to me, allowing for lies and exaggerations which I try to avoid, goes into my poems. I don't think my experiences are clarified or made beautiful for myself or anyone else. They are just there in whatever form I can find them. This is called Fantasy Dedicated to the Health of Allen Ginsberg. It depends on how angry you get as you go along and how dissatisfied. How do you like the music of Adolf Deutsch? I like it. I like it better than Max Steiner's. Take his score for Northern Pursuit. 
the Helmut Dantine theme was. And then the window fell on my hand. Errol Flynn was skiing by. Down, down, down went the grim gray submarine under the cold ice. Helmut was safely ashore on the ice. What dreams, what incredible fantasies of snow farts will this all lead to? I don't know. I have stopped thinking like a sled dog. The main thing is to tell a story. It is almost very important. Imagine throwing away the avalanche so early in the movie. I am the only spy left in Canada. But just because I'm alone in the snow doesn't necessarily mean I'm a Nazi. Let's see, two aspirins, a vitamin C tablet, and some baking soda should do the trick. That's practically an Alka-Seltzer. Alan, come out of the bathroom and take it. I think someone put butter on my skis instead of wax. Ouch. The lean-to is falling over in the furs, and there is another fatter spy there. They didn't tell me they sent him. Well, that takes care of him. Boy, were those huskies hungry. Alan, are you feeling any better? Yes, I'm crazy about Helmut Dantin. But I'm glad that Canada will remain free. Just free, that's all. Never argue with the movies. The day Lady died. It is 12.20 in New York, a Friday. It's three days after Bastille Day, yes. It is 19.59 and I go get a shoe shine because I will get off the 419 in East Hampton at 7.15 and then go straight to dinner and I don't know the people who will feed me. I walk up the muggy street beginning to sun and have a hamburger and a malted and buy an ugly New World writing to see what the poets in Ghana are doing these days. I go on to the bank and Miss Stillwagon, first name Linda I once heard, doesn't even look up my balance for once in her life. And in the Golden Griffin, I get a little Verlaine <coughs> for Patsy with drawings by Bonnard, although I do think of Hesiod, Trans Richard, Richmond Lattimore, or Brendan Behan's new play, or Le Balcon, or Les Nègres, or Genet. But I don't. I stick with Verlaine after practically going to sleep with quandariness. And for Mike, I just stroll into the Park Lane liquor store and ask for a bottle of Strega, and then I go back where I came from, to 6th Avenue, and the tobacconist in the Ziegfeld Theater, and casually ask for a carton of Goulois <coughs> and a carton of Picayunes and a New York Post with her face on it. And I am sweating a lot by now and thinking of leaning on the John door in the five spot while she whispered a song along the keyboard to Mal Waldron, and everyone and I stopped breathing. The next poem is called Song. Is it dirty? Does it look dirty? That's what you think of in the city. Does it just seem dirty? That's what you think of in the city. You don't refuse to breathe, do you? Someone comes along with a very bad character. He seems attractive. Is he really? Yes, very. He's attractive as his character is bad. Is it? Yes. That's what you think of in the city. Run your finger along your no moss mind. That's not a thought, that's soot. And you take a lot of dirt off someone. Is the character less bad? No. It improves constantly. You don't refuse to breathe, do you? This poem is from the love poems. And um, it's sort of like uh, I had the idea of uh, Marianne Moore in a way because the title is part of the poem and also as it, it defines something, but I don't know how. The poem's called Having a Coke with You. It's even more fun than going to San Sebastian, Irun, Ondai, Biarritz, Bayonne, or being sick to my stomach on the Travesera de Gracia in Barcelona. Partly because in your orange shirt you look like a better, happier Saint Sebastian. Partly because of my love for you. Partly because of your love for yogurt. Partly because of the fluorescent orange tulips around the birches. Partly because of the secrecy our smiles take on before people and statuary. It is hard to believe when I'm with you that there can be anything as still, as solemn, as unpleasantly definitive as statuary when right in front of it, in the warm New York four o'clock light. We are drifting back and forth between each other like a tree breathing through its spectacles. And the portrait show seems to have no faces in it at all, just paint. You suddenly wonder why in the world anyone ever did them. I look 
at you, and I would rather look at you than all the portraits in the world, except possibly for the Polish rider occasionally. And anyway, it's in the Frick, which, thank heavens, you haven't gone to yet, so we can go together the first time. And the fact that you move so beautifully, more or less, takes care of futurism, just as at home I never think of the nude descending a staircase or at a rehearsal a single drawing of Leonardo or Michelangelo that used to wow me. And what good does all the research of the Impressionists do them when they never got the right person to stand near the tree when the sun sank? Or for that matter, Marino Marini, when he didn't pick the rider as carefully as the horse. It seems they were all cheated of some marvelous experience, which is not going to go wasted on me, which is why I'm telling you about it.